Owning a house is a keystone to wealth. It provides security financially and emotionally both. It's an American dream. It's an Indian dream. It's a Canadian dream. It's everyone's dream. But it's not as easy to buy a house, is it? You must have at least 20% down payment saved. You must have an extraordinary credit score. Then you must at least have 10% extra money set aside for furniture, registration, and myriad other miscellaneous expenses. And after doing all of that, after all the hassle, you start paying the monthly installment to the bank. Month after month after month for 30 long, long years of your life. But what if I can tell you that you can buy your dream house without any of these hassles? Like literally none of that. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this is a clickbait. This cannot be true. And I get it. It's not your fault. This is how they want you to think about it. It's not you, it's their greed. Hey logical people, GKV here and welcome to the first and only YouTube channel where we talk about fitness, family, friends and financial freedom. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the math, logic and economics of how you can buy your dream house without taking any loan whatsoever. Sit back, relax and prepare to be dazzled because this episode is going to blow your mind and change your point of view of how to buy a house. So let's first buy the house in a traditional way. So assuming you want to buy a house worth 1 million US dollars or 1 crore Indian rupees, it doesn't matter. You know why? Because the logic that I have designed is of course is country independent. You just put the required numbers and the model will tell you the answer. It is as simple as that. So I'm going to go here and say Again, the city and the amount is experimental. The logic stays the same. And for the sake of discussion, we're going to assume that the value is 10 million Indian rupees. Okay, perfect. So now do you remember that you also need a down payment? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 20% here. So what our model calculates is this is the amount that we need from the bank as a loan. Okay. And in India, on an average, bank charges you around 7.5% interest on a home loan. So I'm going to put 7.5%. Everything that you see in the model in yellow color, you can edit that. Okay. Beautiful. So now this is the amount you have to pay to the bank per month for 30 long years. Notice how I have divided your monthly payment into two chunks. The first chunk is divided into interest payment and the second one is principal repayment. So you keep doing that for 30 years and congratulations, the house is yours. In 30 years, you paid more than two times what you took from the bank. I would love to tell you otherwise, but unfortunately, that's how loan works. And now you might say, GKV, so what? Everyone takes a home loan and this is how it is done. What I would say is this is where you are wrong. This is not how it should be done. This is how the capitalist people want you to think about it. And not to mention when you buy this house, you will be tied up to that one location wherever you happen to buy this house even if you get a better opportunity in a different city. Now you might say, that's not true GKV. I can always have an option to rent the property. And I would say, sure you can. And ignoring all the hassles that it takes to manage the property from a remote location, let's, let's have a look at the numbers. So in general, the rental yield is maximum, maximum 3% if you're living in a tier one city like New Delhi, Mumbai, New York, right? With that 3%, the amount of rent you can get is this, which means on a monthly basis, you're going to get a rental income of that amount. Beautiful, right? But here's the problem. Now, since you left your home city and you moved to a new city, you also have to rent a place to live. And I'm assuming you're going to rent almost same amount. So this is what you will earn. And this is what you will pay away as a rent. Therefore, your net gain is zero. And let me remind you that you're still paying this amount to the bank every month. Does that mean all the hope is lost? Well, not so soon because we still have one tab, which is a logical way of buying a house. So let's, let's explore that as well. So the cost of your dream house still remains the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just link it. Your down payment 
it still remains the same, right? So I'm going to link that as well. So that's the amount you have already secured. You have this amount. Now this is where the logical framework is different. What you will do is instead of giving all that money to the bank, what you want to do is you want to invest it. So here I've taken that money and I've invested it. And in general, what you ought to do is you have to invest it in a relatively low risk mutual fund. So I'm going to say we're going to earn a 14% interest on it. And look at that, that 20% saving that you were about to give to the bank has already started working for you. It has already started to generate interest income for you. Now, I know a few of you might be shouting that mutual funds are risky, stock markets are risky. I know that. I get that. But I will talk about that in a moment. Right now, let's understand the concept, okay? Perfect. So what we have done is we have taken the 20%. We have invested that. What else can we do? Hmm. Now, if you remember a moment ago, you calculated that you can actually afford to pay some amount to the bank on a monthly basis, right? So let's bring that in here. There you go. Now, since you did not buy a house, you need a place to live, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to use 50% of that to rent a nice place for yourself. There you go. And I'm going to just drag it. At this point, what you're doing is you're using the 50% of the EMI that you are ready to give to the bank to rent yourself a place. There it is. And the rest of the 50%, we're going to reinvest in the stock market. Okay. Perfect. So the second last piece of puzzle is that I'm going to assume that your rent will increase by 10% every year and your earning potential will also go up by 10% every year. There it is. 10% divided by 12 like that. And there you go. Perfect. But if you look closely, after a few years, the rent will become too much. You're never going to pay this much rent, right? So what you have to do is you have to recalibrate this rent percentage whatever makes more sense to your living standards, okay? I would say try to stay as low as possible on your living standards for a couple of years. So we're gonna see how many years that gonna be. So I'm gonna select all these amount and I'm gonna put 40%, for example. Perfect. All of this is done. The only thing is left is how many years do we want to do this? Well, that's what we have to figure out. So if I go here and put seven years, hmm. See, in seven years, if you do all of this, all of this with 100% with discipline, you will have that much amount cash. But that's not good enough, right? So let's go and put it at eight. And voila, you see, in eight years, you're going to have more than, more than enough amount of money that you need to buy that house. Isn't that beautiful? So if you do that, so if you do all of that for seven to eight years, you can actually buy your dream house without any debt. Now compare this with what you were doing here for 30 years where you were paying exorbitant amount of money to the bank just because you wanted to buy this house today. But if you follow the logical way and you wait for a couple of years and you be a little bit disciplined, you're going to buy this house in just 7 to 8 years all by cash for yourself without any debt whatsoever. stock market goes up and down daily forget daily every second every minute this is how the indian market went today now if i go and switch this scale to five years you will notice that one two three four five six times in the period of five years market went down during covid it went from 41 to, to 31 it, it went down almost 33 percent but if you look at the bigger picture, if you look at the five year scale, the market always goes up. And if you look at the 30 year horizon of Indian market or any stock market for that matter, you would see that there are dips. There are major dips. For example, 2008 financial crisis market went down more than 50 percent. But if you are a value investor, if you are someone who has done things systematically, who has put money in the market, even if even when the market was going down, which basically means that you have bought stocks at a really cheaper prices. After that, when market bounces up, it pays off immensely. With that, GKB signing off. As always, thank you for watching and do not forget to share this video 
as much as possible because when you share this video, YouTube will understand that this video creates a value. Therefore, it will show it to more people, more people like you and me, people who need to get out of the rat race, people who want to become financially free.